Good day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and neighbors. Today we're going to look at Unit 4, Lesson 2, Rational Functions. And we're going to start off by just looking at Lesson 2.1, more with end behavior of polynomials. So the first part of this particular lesson is just a polynomial. It's just another way to talk about and look about the end behavior of a polynomial. And as a side note, I usually uh, preface this lesson with a video over the most important image known to mankind. So I would ask that you, most important, and I will try to get a copy of this, most important image known to mankind. You can Google that and see what happens. You're going to be, uh, your mind will be blown uh, as this is a pretty, and it's really, it's nice to show at the Ivy Tech uh, uh, stadium seating because I can shut the lights off and it's really impactful. But we're going to have to forego that video right now and just jump into uh, this particular lesson. So here, what we're going to do is we're consider a really, 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 really big number. And we're going to call that number Kerbillion. And we're going to allow, and we're going to just crop for short, CRA. This real number is so big compared to any other real number. So big, in fact, that Kerbillion plus 5 is Kerbillion. So, and I have to think about this for a minute. If you had... A billion dollars. If if you had a billion dollars, if you had a billion dollars, and somebody gave you five hundred dollars, how much would you have? You wouldn't have five. You wouldn't have a billion plus five hundred. You would just have a billion dollars because you have a billion dollars. Losing a hundred dollars or losing a thousand dollars, gaining a thousand dollars, losing a thousand dollars has no bearing on the fact that you have a billion dollars. And that's the same deal that we're going to talk about, the same kind of concept about this Kerbillion. And, and we're going to allow, we're going to allow Kerbillion, and there isn't, there isn't a largest real number, but we're going to let Kerbillion be the largest real number, the largest real number. That's what this video up here helps. The largest real number known to mankind. The largest real number. Well, there is no largest, but for a brief moment, we're going to allow Kerbillion to be a real number. In fact, it's the largest, the largest real number ever. We're just going to assume for a moment that it is a real, it is a real number, and it's the largest real number. And if I take Kerbillion plus 5, that's just Kerbillion. If I take Kerbillion and subtract from it this large number, guess what? That's just Kerbillion. Well, what if I had the largest real number and squared it? Whoa. Whoa. That's going to be like a super duper bit. And then add a Kerbillion to it? Nope. This is going to be insignificant compared to this thing squared. So Kerbillion squared plus Kerbillion, it's just Kerbillion squared. Kerbillion minus this big number is Kerbillion. That's how big this number is. And we are going to need to realize this. The Kerbillion is a real number, and it's going to help us in our study of functions. We can't use this. We can't use infinity because that's a concept. That's not a real number. That's just, oh, okay, it's going to get really big. Nope. This is not a real number. It's just a concept. It means big. But Kerbillion is a real number. Since infinity is not a real number, that makes no sense. F of Kerbillion makes no sense. It's, 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 it's just makes no sense. It's not defined. It's just nope. It's not even out there because you can't put a concept into a function. However, F of Kerbillion is a real number. That makes sense. And we're going to talk about f of Kerbillion. It's a real number that makes sense. Because if I have a function, if I have any function f of x, and I put in it a real number, and I output a real number, 
if I put in a real number, it's going to, if provided I'm not dividing by zero or something, it's going to output a real number. So this guy here is a real number, f of Kerbillion. So let's consider this factored polynomial. This is going to help us most with rational functions. But we have to do a little preface to rational functions. And we're going to do some Kerbillion. We're going to evaluate some polynomials at Kerbillion. Example number one. If I have this, this function right here, x plus 9 times x minus 12 times x plus 67, and I want to know what f of Kerbillion is, well, I'm going to put Kerbillion in. Well, Kerbillion, Kerbillion plus 9, craw minus 12, craw plus 67. Well, guess what? Craw plus 9 is just craw. Craw minus 12 is just craw. Craw plus 67. So this is just Kerbillion cubed, which is a big number. In like manner, f of negative Kerbillion is negative Kerbillion plus 9. Hey, what's negative big number? It's just negative Kerbillion. Negative Kerbillion minus 12 is just negative Kerbillion. Negative Kerbillion plus 67, negative Kerbillion. And I have negative, negative, negative is negative Kerbillion cubed. Okay, we know the end behavior of this is x cubed, and this end behavior evaluated at cra is Kerbillion cubed. Okay, so let's go for another example here. Suppose I have this guy right here. Oh, this is not factored. This guy here is not factored out. Oh, okay. So what do I do? F of Kerbillion. I'm going to put wherever I see X, I'm going to put Kerbillion in. 2 Kerbillion to the 5th minus 9 Kerbillion cubed plus 6 Kerbillion squared plus... Guess what that is? Well, compared to this, compared to 2 Kerbillion to the 5th power... All of these other terms are insignificant. They're so small compared to that, that f of Kerbillion is just this guy right here. And actually, we know that this is the power function for this polynomial. The power function for this polynomial is 2x to the fifth. We know that anyway. That's that power function. And f of Kerbillion is just the power function evaluated at Kerbillion. All of these things are insignificant, close to zero. The end behavior of this is 2x to the fifth evaluated at Kerbillion. What's negative? f of negative Kerbillion. f of negative Kerbillion. What are we going to do? We're going to put negative Kerbillion in. So this is going to be 2 times negative Kerbillion to the fifth, minus nine negative crawl cubed plus six Kerbillion squared plus nine. I get, I, whoa, 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 whoa. Insignificant, insignificant, insignificant. So F of negative Kerbillion is just this dude right here. And I have a negative number to the fifth power. That's going to be negative. So what, guess what this is? Negative Kerbillion to the fifth power, which would be the power function evaluated at negative Kerbillion. Okay, and that is the power function evaluated at negative Kerbillion. Just put it right into the power function. It's going to be 2 negative Kerbillion to the fifth, which is negative Got my two right there. Hold on. Kerbillion to the fifth. Okay. Example number three before we get into rational functions. All oh, right. Oh, oh. What's 20? What is f of Kerbillion? Oh, f of Kerbillion here is simply going to be 23 times Kerbillion minus something that means little to next to nothing and significant. So that is just. 23 Kerbillion, 23 Skidoo. What is this? F of negative crawl. That's going to be 23 times negative Kerbillion. 
which is, oh, minus this thing that doesn't make diddly squat. What does that equal? Negative 23 per billion. Okay, so just a different way to look at the end behavior of a polynomial. Let's get on to the essence of this lesson, which is This, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why I developed Crabillion. It's because there was a lot of misconception out there that infinity over infinity was equal to 1. Well, infinity over infinity does not equal 1 because there's different sizes of infinity. That's for a different math class. What you need to realize is that infinity over infinity does not equal 1, but crebillion over crebillion does equal 1, since crebillion is a real number. This is the reason why I developed this whole idea of crebillion. And we're going to use this fact a lot in calculus. We're going to use this fact a lot in calculus, too, that infinity over infinity does not equal 1, but I'm going to guarantee you one day, only thing right now, crebillion over crebillion does equal 1. So here I have this quotient. This is quotients with crebillion. Here I have this quotient right here. It's 5x plus 90, 987 divided by x minus 5. And I want to find out what that quotient is at crebillion. Oh, okay, well, let's put crebillion in then. Well, that's going to be 5 times crebillion plus 987. Crebillion minus 65. Guess what? This is insignificant. This is insignificant. So you get 5 crebillion over crebillion. Guess what? Crebillion over crebillion is 1, so that's just equal to 5. And in fact, 5 is the end behavior of this quotient right here. Why? Because C of crebillion is equal to 5. Since C of crebillion is equal to 5, 5 is called the end behavior. That's what this graph of this guy is going to look like as we get way out to the end. We talked about end behavior of polynomials, but this quotient has a specific end behavior. And since it is 5, we say C of X has a horizontal asymptote. And I'm not quite sure if, you, if we've talked about horizontal asymptotes or not. We may or may not have mentioned these in Algebra 2. I'm not quite, I don't remember. Algebra 2, I do remember how to spell algebra. We may or may not talk about horizontal asymptotes. If we didn't, we are right now, and that's good. So the end behavior of this is 5, because C of Kerbillion is 5. And what we say as x goes to infinity, Notice we don't have as x equal infinity because it doesn't. As x goes to infinity, c of x goes to 5. As x goes to negative infinity, oh, this would go to 5 as well. Because what is c of negative crebillion? c of negative crebillion is equal to 5 times negative crebillion over negative crebillion. Negative divided by negative is positive, so that's equal to 5 as well. Okay, let's continue on. Let's do example 5 here. I have this cubic polynomial. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have another quotient. Let's get back here. This time I have a quotient. Of, I had a quotient of a polynomial divided by a polynomial before, and I do here as well. So I have this cubic divided by this quadratic, and I want to know what C of crebillion is. Well, if you put crebillion in, you get crebillion cubed plus 9 crebillion squared minus 7 crebillion. All of this stuff here is insignificant. Don't need it. All of this stuff is insignificant. So I have crebillion cubed over crebillion squared. And what is that? Just crebillion. C of negative crebillion, put negative insignificant. 
insignificant. I get negative per billion cubed is negative, 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 which is negative per billion cubed over per billion squared. That's negative per billion. So the end behavior, oh, the end behavior of this is y equals x because it just goes to per billion or it goes to per billion and negative per billion. And this graph, this point, this this quotient here is going to look like y equal x on the end. It has no horizontal asymptote. For a function to have a horizontal asymptote, the end behavior must be a constant. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time we talked about this. This is going to be, we're going to be in this lesson for a while. Unit 2. So the end behavior has to be a constant. If the end behavior is a constant, like a number, then we say there is a horizontal asymptote. If it's just if it's just infinity or negative infinity or kerbillion or negative kerbillion, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Going back to this example, we say as x goes to positive infinity, this function goes to x. Oh, why? Because x cubed over x squared is x. As x goes to negative infinity, we get x cubed over x squared is x as well. And keep in mind, oh, this guy looks positive. Well, he's not positive because I'm going x negative infinity. And don't forget what y equals x looks like. Y equals x looks like looks like this. And that's what this graph is going to look like on the ends. It's just going to look like y equals x on the end. Let's see if we have another example here. Um, oh, this is a this is a lesson out of a fifth grade text. <clears throat> Recall, if I have five pizzas, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. I have five pizzas. I'm dividing it into six people. Five divided by seven, five divided by nine, five divided by 12. What's going to happen? The pieces are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. If I have five pieces and divide it into, think about that, a thousand people, how big a piece is someone going to get? Not very big. If I have five pizzas, pizzas, and divide it by, divide those five pizzas into 100 billion people, nobody's going to get anything. And that's why, and this is a very important topic as well, the more pieces that you divide something, that something is divided up into, the smaller the pieces become. In fact, for any real number, B is smaller than Kerbillion, because Kerbillion is the largest real number. Where B is B less than Kerbillion, B divided by Kerbillion is super duper close to zero. B divided by negative is close to negative zero. So guess what we have, ladies and gentlemen? We have positive zero and we have negative zero. This is a, uh, it's going to be a topic that's going to be hard to wrap your head around at first, but eventually you will be able to wrap your head around. So I'm at about 20 minutes into this video. I do have an assignment about this. Uh, it's a very easy assignment. It just talks about polynomials. I'm going to post this so you can try to fill this out. This is not going to be collected. Uh, this is the this is the assignment right here. Let me see here how much. I thought there was a page two to this assignment. I thought there was. So anyway. Um, I don't know what's going on here, but I will post this assignment, page one and page two. And keep in mind, this we're going to be looking at this lesson right here, lesson two, for quite some time. So don't worry about it. It's going to take a while for this to settle in. And I will talk to you and see you soon.